Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're well. My name is Tracy and this is a DIY upcycling channel where we take pre-owned items and turn them into one-of-a-kind unique clothing purses and accessories. And I really hope most of all what you get out of my videos is fun. Like I want you to take a new look at sewing. I have a very simple machine. I don't use patterns. I don't have rules. It's artsy, fun, creativity. I have some viewers tell me that I dusted off my old sewing machine because I think I can make these creations and it looks like so much fun. I've had viewers say, you know what? I'm going to go buy a sewing machine because this looks so doable. So keep an open mind. Today, I want to make sort of an artsy coat. And I got a couple of my items off of eBay pre-owned. Now I just got this simple beigey jacket and I am going to create a new shape to it. I'm going to add purple fabric flower appliques. These things are all pre-owned and the linen tablecloth that I'll use, it's vintage. I got it at a thrift store. So let's get going. Okay, so I have my coat laying out here. If my coat was fully lined, I would probably carefully cut out the lining because I'm going to be doing a lot of cutting on this and a lot of sewing, and I wouldn't want to fight that. Now, mine is just partially lined, and it comes into this part, so I don't want to mess with it yet. I'll have to just play with it and see how things go. So, I am coming up 11 inches for my first cut. So what I'm going to do is open this up so that I'm just working on one side. And I'm going to make sure that pocket, if you have any pockets are out of the way because I'll be freehanding cutting this. Okay, so I made a mark 11 inches up and there is a split right here I'm not going to worry about that. I am just going to come to the seam right above there, cut slightly through it from this dot, and I will make just a little bit of, I'll exaggerate, a curve this way. But mine will be more subtle. And I am just going to cut. Okay, so now I have that cut. I am going to come back to the front of my coat and I am going to line this up where it's open right here, making sure the button, buttonholes, everything are lined up where they need to be. And I am going to lay this down neatly. Now I'm going to play with this a little bit because it's kind of important here to make sure it's perfectly lined up because I'm going to follow this first cut I made and it will be my guide. So let me get that done. Okay, now I'm just going to follow that cut and cut the other side all the way down to the slit on the opposite side of the jacket. Okay, so I opened my jacket up and I'm looking at the back side now. Now here is where we cut and there's that little slit right at the seam where I stopped. And that is four and a quarter inches up from the bottom. And I am going to mark four and a quarter inches all along the bottom of my jacket. And that will be my cut line. I'm going to cut a piece four and a quarter inches tall off of the bottom. Now, just using these dashes as my guide, I'm going to cut that off. Okay, here's the shape that we have now. Now, these are pockets that will be covered by a puffy ruffle that I'll be making. But see, it's higher in front, comes down, and back up. Okay, so now for the sleeves. 
What I want is like a three quarter length sleeve, but I want a wide puffy ruffle at the bottom of it. So I lined my sleeves up as perfectly as I can. And from the very top shoulder seam, I measured down 11 inches on mine. And I am just going to cut straight across. Okay, so the sleeves are lined. And I'm just going to go to my machine and I'm going to hem that lining and then I'll be done with it. Now, I'll show you how I hem things. I'm, I only bore you with it once, so just assume from now on if we hem something, this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay, I have my jacket inside out and I separated the lining from the sleeve. Now, I'm just going to remove this front plate and I'm going to slide that lining piece over the arm here. And I will do three rows of stitching. And that may seem like an extra step, but it's so much easier than pinning and measuring and all of that. I have my stitch length on a fairly small straight stitch. And I am just going to run a guideline. I'm not folding anything over right now. I'm going to line the edge up with the side of my presser foot and go all the way around. Okay, so now that I have my guideline done, I'm folding it over again to where I can just barely see that line, and I'm making another stitch all the way around. I'm hung up on something here. Now that I have that second row sewn, I'm folding it over one more time just like we did before where I can barely see that stitch line. And I'm sewing it for the final time. Okay, now I want to create or begin to create and prep these. I'm calling them balloon ruffles because they'll be double sided. And I needed a large piece of fabric in order to create this. And I took this jacket to the thrift store with me because I wanted to try and match the color. I was looking for like a bed sheet, curtain, tablecloth, anything with a lot of yardage. And I could not find anything, but what I found was, this was a white damask linen tablecloth. Very old, it has tons of mending in it, which doesn't bother me a bit. And I had to dye it to match the best that I can. Now, you don't have to do all of that. If you have, you don't have to use this beigey taupey color. Maybe you have a black jacket and you can find some black fabric or a pattern jacket with a pattern ruffle and appliques, really whimsical, cool look. So just keep an open mind. If you want to know more about dyeing, I do have some videos um, that I'll link down in my description. I have all kinds of them actually. There's one type I do on the stove top and there's one type I do in the washer. Okay, so let's start prepping these ruffles. Okay, so what I did first was measure the perimeter of the bottom of the jacket all the way around and I got 71 inches. And I'm going to add 35 inches to that because I want subtle pleating, not dramatic pleating. So I took that 71 inches and I added 35 inches, which gave me a total of 106 inches. So I cut out from that tablecloth a piece that's 106 inches long. Well, my tablecloth wasn't 106 inches long, so I had to piece two together super simple i just used a quarter inch seam allowance put right sides together remeasured it to 106 inches oh this is kind of important it's 22 inches this way okay now i want to cut out the pieces for the ruffle on the sleeve so i measured around the armhole and i got 18 inches and I added nine inches to that number to give me that little subtle pleating and it brought me to 27 inches. Now I tried this on 
And in order for it to be about here, I want sort of a three quarter length sleeve. I need eight inches. Well, these are all going to be doubled. So I have to double that number. I want it to be eight inches, but I have to double that and make it 16. So I cut out two pieces of fabric, 27 by 16. Okay, before I do anything else to those ruffles, I need to sew some flower appliques on them while well, they're nice and easy to sew right now. And what I have are four curtain panels that I got from eBay. And they are old. And in the description, she even wrote, these are old and have been stored for a long time and have a musty smell. And they did but I washed them up, they smell and look wonderful. I have four of these, did I say that? And these are going to be my flower applique. Okay, I have quite a few, probably all I'll need prepped already, except for a couple pieces so that I can show you what I'm doing here. Now, on this project, I am going to back, these are all backed with fusible medium weight interfacing just because I think that will help with fraying. Now this jacket's a little more elegant. Usually I don't back them because I don't mind a little bit of fraying, but I am trying to eliminate as much fraying as I can, but it will be impossible to eliminate all of it. So what I'm doing is I just cut out a chunk and I will go to my ironing board and I'll show you what I do. I cut out a chunk of interfacing that will cover that, you know, just outside of the design a little bit. Now let's go to the ironing board. Okay, first I'm laying down a tea towel so that this interfacing doesn't stick to my ironing board. And then I'm taking my design and I'm putting it right side down the pretty side down. And then I'm going to cover it with this piece of interfacing. Now this has a smooth side and sort of a bumpy little side. And those are glue dots, that bumpy side. And I want that down, the glue dots down on top of my design. And I am going to take my iron, I have my steam on, and I'm going to hold it in each spot for 10 seconds. And then when that's adhered, I won't be sliding my iron around like this. I will pick it up and move it to the next spot until the whole thing is adhered. Now this is what it looks like. And I just have to cut out what I want here. And here are some examples of ones that I've already done. Here is the bottom of my coat, and here is that 22 inch ruffle that I cut for the bottom. Now, these ruffles will be folded in half like this and sewn on. They'll actually be a little more pleaty like that. So, I do not have to sew applique on the underside. I only need to sew it on this part. This is the only part that will be visible. So I'm going to open this up and I am going to lay my appliques on just this top half where I want them. Okay, so I have these sort of tentatively placed where I want them and I'll give you a closer look where I put them, but I am just going to pin them on right now. Okay, I'll show you the best I can the placement of these. Oh, 
Okay, now it's time to sew them on. Okay, to sew them on, I've done lots of videos where I've sewn applique onto projects. And almost every single time, I get comments from people saying, you should try using a walking foot, which is in place of your presser foot. So many comments that I went out and bought one because they're saying it makes your life so much easier going around all those curves and things. So I'm going to try it. I got one at Joanne Fabric. It was the only one they had really. And I don't know a lot about it. So if you have questions, maybe you can help each other out in a discussion in the comments or something. So sorry, I don't even have a link because I don't know what to recommend. But I've got one. I've got it attached to my machine. I'm going to try it out. Now all I'm going to do to sew it is use a fairly small straight stitch and stay as close to the edge as I can around all these flowers and leaves. Let me say, you certainly don't need a walking foot to do this. And I'm finding that I can see a lot better where I'm going with it. And it goes around subtle curves better than with just a presser foot, but I still have to lift it up to make sharp turns. Now that I have this all sewn, what I want to do is put right sides together and line it up at the top and the sides. And I will put a few pins in there to hold that from going crazy on me. Keep things fairly secure. So I'll do that. I'm going to pin the sides and all across the top. Okay, now I have the three sides all pinned. And what I want to do is just sew that all shut. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and go all the way around. The only thing you have to remember is I'm going to start about right here, giving myself like a five or six inch opening so that I can reach in and turn that right side out when I'm done. So I'll start here and go up the side all the way across and completely down the opposite side. Okay, now I have that all sewn and I am just going to turn it right side out. Okay, now that I have it all right side out and the corners are poked out, I am just going to press it along the top where that seam is. And I'm not going to press the sides or the bottom because I want it to look poofy, kind of like a little bubble. Okay, so now I just want to close up that hole that we left open and I'm just tucking the sides in a little bit on each side. I'm going to do an invisible stitch or it's called a ladder stitch or slip stitch. And I am pinning mine just because this linen is kind of not flimsy, but wispy. Now I have a needle and thread. It's doubled and knotted. I am going to start it by going up underneath one of those folds and coming out. That way it'll hide the knot. Okay, and all I'm doing, so here's my thread right there. On the fold right across from that thread, I'm going to slip my needle in, go along that fold, you know, maybe eighth inch, quarter inch, and pull that together. And then 
Now the thread is on this side. I'm going to come directly across from it, stick my needle in, go along that fold, and pull it. And I will do that till I'm all the way down at the end. And I will show you when I'm at the end how I finish it off. Okay, now I'm at the very end and I'm going to catch a little piece of fabric and I'm just going to make a couple knots just by making a loop, sticking my needle through. Oops. Do that a couple times so that it's durable. Okay, now I don't want to cut it off right there because then there's a knot. So I'm going to stick it back, the needle back through this fold, and I'm going to bring it out, not on the back side, but just one layer right here. Pull that, that'll pull that knot through, and then I'll cut it off right there. Okay, now I want to attach the ruffle to the coat. I have the coat laid out right side up and I'm looking at my ruffle here. There are a couple different ways to do this and I've done both. You can base the top of this whole ruffle and then just sort of shear it until it matches the length of the coat. But that's a lot of basting. My machine doesn't do it. I have I don't have a large enough stitch on my machine. So I would have to do it all by hand. And I find this is probably going to be easier for me. I am just going to lay this ruffle on top of the coat, right sides together. And the edge that we sewed here with the seam will be at the edge of the coat. And I will pin, go to the other end and this end and pin the corners. Okay, now I need to find up the approximate center of this ruffle. So I'll just kind of lift it up and eyeball it and then find the approximate center of the coat. Put another pin. And then between these two pins, the same thing. I'm going to find the approximate center of the ruffle approximate center of the jacket which is about right there stick a pin in it and I'll just keep doing that all the way down until I don't have much fabric left to work with that it's all pleated Now I have everything pinned and it's time to sew. I'm just going to take it to my machine, of course, start it one end or the other. And see these little mountains that we still have? When I'm going over these with my machine, I'll have to push these one way or the other. It doesn't matter which way, but just be consistent, whatever way you do decide. I'm going to use my second to largest zigzag stitch and a quarter inch seam allowance and get that all sewn. Okay, I have that all sewn on. And now what I want to do is just give that seam a press just towards the top here. And this time I'm going to lay a tea towel down. I don't want to take the chance of getting anything to get anything on my coat right now. Okay, so there's what the ruffle looks like. So cute. Now I'm wrapping it up for the day, but I'll be back in the next scene. But overnight or this evening, I bought these buttons also at Joanne Fabric. They are like a, bronzy filigree button. I'm going to replace these plastic buttons. And one, two, three, four. 
with these. I'll just sit down and relax, pop these off with a seam ripper, sew these on in their place. Okay, buttons are done, and I did one sleeve, and I left one to do so I can show you what's going on here. Okay, so like on this sleeve, I took one of my appliques and I cut it in half and I sewed part of it on the jacket sleeve and part of it on the linen piece. And so that's what I'm doing over here. I just kind of tentatively pinned that. Here's the bottom of the sleeve. Now, I am just going to mark it a little bit so I kind of remember where I want that cut in half. Now I unpinned it from my sleeve. Here's one mark and here's another mark. I am just going to cut that in half. Now I'm just going to repin this onto my sleeve. I like seeing it on the mannequin. If you don't have a mannequin, maybe do something like this on a hanger. But I'm just going to stick a couple pins in and then I'll take it off and pin it better once it's on the table. Now I'll be doing the applique on the sleeve ruffle very similar to the bottom ruffle with a couple differences. So I'm going to take the bottom half of that applique and I'm going to line it up pretty close to the top about in the center and then I'm going to pin that on. Now my other sleeve doesn't have an additional applique anywhere else. But I think I'm going to on this one, just because this piece is so small. So let me go grab that. Now this will be folded like this, pretty close to that when I'm all done. And I'm thinking I want one maybe about here and it'll wrap under a little bit when I fold it. I'll position it how I like it better. Okay, so now I'm going to get these two pinned on. Now I'm going to go to my machine and sew these on, just like I did the ones on the bottom ruffle. Okay, so now I have this one all pinned on as well, and I need to sew it. And arms can be a little tricky if they're not wide enough. Now, and this is a pretty big applique on this one. I imagine I'll be coming in through the armhole and I'll be coming in through here as well for some of it. I just have to kind of feel it out when I'm at the machine. Now, if your arm is too narrow to slide into the machine this way, you can seam rip that open and then sew it back shut when you're done. It's easier when the cuff and everything is cut off like this to seam rip open the side and sew it back together, but just kind of got to work it out the best you can. Okay, now that I have this all sewn, I'm going to do this just like I did the big ruffle. Right sides together, line up this edge and the sides, and I'm going to stick a few pins in. And now I'm going to sew it just like I did the big ruffle. I'm going to start here, leaving a gap to turn it right side out so that I can get my hand in there and poke those corners. So I'll leave a gap about five inches. So I'll start here, sew all the way around. And now I can turn it right side out. Now it's all right side out. And I pressed that top seam like we did the other one. And on this one, the sleeves, I'm going to press the ends as well. And when I get to this side where we still have that opening, I'm just going to tuck that in a little bit. 
just so it matches up with the rest of the side. And I'm going to press that down. And then just press the entire side. And now all I do is I want to sew the two ends together so it'll be right sides together. Line up the two ends just like that. I'll stick a few pins in there. I'll go to my machine and just do not even a quarter inch seam allowance. I want I don't want the, the seam to be super bulky. So I'm just going to stay neatly close to the edge and get that completely sewn. Okay, so I turned it right side out and just gave that seam a good press. And now I need to turn it back inside out. And this is the bottom, the bubble part. This is the part that we sewed. I want the bottom to go over the sleeve first. But what I need to make sure here is that I'm lining up that other half of the applique with this. So I'm going to slide the sleeve inside and I'm just going to look at it underneath here and line that applique up and then I will stick one pin in the middle of those two appliques, which were actually one. Now I'm just going to evenly distribute all the pins like I did on the other ruffle. Find the center here, the center here, and stick a pin in it. And just keep doing that all the way around until it gets smaller and smaller. Each gap will get smaller and smaller until it's ready to sew. Now that I have that all pinned, I'm just going to sew around the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance and my second to largest zigzag stitch. Now that I got it sewn, just laying my tea towel over the seam, giving it a good press. Okay, now the sleeves are done. I love the shape of it. Kind of like a swing jacket. Now all I have to do is sew the rest of my applique on. And it'll take me a little bit to play with this. I'll have my pins handy. I'll spread these out on my table. And I'll just stick one pin in each one until I get them where I want them. When I know I like something, I'll stick like two pins in. And then when I get them all on, I'll unbutton it, lay it out on my table, and pin them very good before I sew them. Okay, I think I have everything pinned where I want it. I did some on the collar. And you know, I only used one of those curtain panels. Um, I have lots left for other projects. So this is where I placed things. And now I'm going to take it off my mannequin and just pin everything super secure and get it's stitched on just like we sewed all the other appliques on the ruffle and I'll put it on and show you what it looks like. Okay, one more thing. So that partial lining on the inside, I am going to pin these when I lay it on my table. I'm going to pin it right to that lining and I will sew the lining with the jacket and the applique. I'm not going to try to fight moving that lining out of the way when I'm sewing.